guys hopefully all of you are doing well today we're going to be making a comfort food classic and that's my homemade chicken and shrimp pot pie this chicken and shrimp pot pie is definitely a dish that's going to help you brave a cold winter night so let's get started to start we're just going to chop up our celery red bell pepper and onion you can barely see it on that plate but it's there along with some fresh thyme and i have some garlic in a large skillet over medium high heat, we're gonna saute the celery, onions, and bell pepper in four tablespoons of olive oil, or you could do four tablespoons of butter or half and half. Just saute that up until the vegetables are nice and soft. Next, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of all-purpose flour right into the skillet, and I'm gonna saute the vegetables up in that just until the uh, flour is cooked really well and it starts to turn a light color brown. So that'll take about three or four minutes. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my chopped garlic, which is about one or two cloves. I added it at this point once the flour started to get a little color on it because if you add it any earlier, that's too long for garlic to be sauteing and it, what it does is it gets bitter. So next, after we saute the garlic around for about 30 seconds or so, we're gonna add some low sodium chicken stock. The stock that I'm actually using today is stock that I made from the rotisserie chicken that we're using for this recipe. And it is so good. I actually just, after I peeled all the meat off the bones, I went and I boiled the bones and the carcass that was left with some onions and garlic. It is so good. Try it once in a while, you may like it. Now I'm just gonna season everything up with some salt and pepper and a little Grand Diamond all-purpose seasoning. Don't forget, for the exact measurements to this recipe, go to gdseasoning.com and the link will be in the description. So we added our seasonings and the fresh thyme. Now we're gonna go in with a cup of milk and a cup of half and half, and we're just gonna stir that in. Now as far as salt in this dish, I used only a half a teaspoon of kosher salt um, because I knew I was gonna use the chicken bouillon granules, as you see me put here, about one teaspoon. I put it in here. And so that also brings salt to the table. Don't put any more than a couple of teaspoons of that bouillon in. You can taste it and see how far you wanna take it, but just start with a half a teaspoon. After the mixture has simmered on medium heat for about 15 to 20 minutes, we're just gonna turn it completely off and then we're just gonna let it hang out while we deal with our puff pastry. Puff pastry is a frozen dough that can be found in the freezer section of your grocery store. If you can't find it, just ask someone. They'll point you in the right direction. Sometimes they come two sheets like this that you see me dealing with here, two sheets to a box, or sometimes they come pre-cut in nice little squares separated by parchment paper in a package so you can find those. And what I'm doing here is just trying to make sure the seams are nice. I'm just rolling out the seams so that they don't break when I go to cut the dough. Puff pastry is a really beautiful, buttery, flaky dough. And if you've never had it before, give it a try because it can be used both in sweet and savory dishes. Now all we have to do is take the puff pastry and cut the one sheet into four equal parts. Once I get the four sections, now I'm just gonna take my knife and make some small slits into each one so that when the pot pies are cooking, they can vent. Now I'm gonna take some 10 ounce ramekins or you can use any type of ovenable bowl containers that you have and I'm gonna brush the outside edges with an egg wash, which is one a whole egg and two tablespoons of water and I'm just gonna brush that on the outside of each one. Now I'm gonna take my seasoned shrimp, which are sizes 31 to 40, which means these are the perfect size that once they cook, they fit on the spoon. They're not too big and not too little. And this recipe is very forgiving. If you wanna put 10 or eight to 10 shrimp per bowl is great. Next, I'm gonna add two and a half to three cups of chopped rotisserie chicken. I just went to my favorite grocery store and got a whole rotisserie chicken. And I'm gonna mix that in along with one fourth cup of frozen peas and one fourth cup of frozen roasted corn, or you could just use regular frozen corn. This recipe is enough for four servings. So what I did was I took out a portion to freeze the filling to freeze and save for later. And then I made three here on the video. My niece found out I was filming. She said, I know you're filming today, auntie. I want that to take for lunch. So she got one and my sister got the other two. So now what I'm gonna do is just take the puff pastry and I'm going to seal it onto the edges of each ramekin. And that's why we put the egg wash on the side so that the puff pastry would stick. <laughs> Here's another tip when you're making this dish, pull the puff pastry kind of taut, not too tight, and make sure that it's not touching the filling below it. I noticed that if it's touching the filling below, it's not going to puff up in a upright position and get all nice and golden. You'll see that in a minute, but try to make sure that the puff pastry is not touching the filling. Lastly, I'm just gonna top each one after I brush it with the egg wash with a little bit of black pepper. And then we're gonna bake them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes until they're nice and golden brown and all nice and puffy and buttery. 
just like that. Now see, when they come out, look at it, the one on the right is so nice and puffy. See, that's what I was talking about. When you pull the dough nice and taut, it puffs up like that. So inviting, so warm. Just makes you wanna dig right in. I made breadsticks out of the other sheet. Yeah, I didn't skimp. <laughs> Just in case you wanna dip into the, like that, dip into the pie. Oh yeah, you don't wanna miss this one. Well guys, I do hope you decide to give this recipe a try sooner than later. I thank you so much for coming and hanging out and cooking with me. You know I appreciate it. Don't forget this recipe along with others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you next time.